Well, I think this is kind of interesting while we're waiting uh, for everybody to join us. Is I went to find a copy of the new pattern, and what I found on my desk was multiple copies that are written all over with many notes. Because each time we sew a sample out, we double check everything, we make notes on it so that the pattern guide is correct and the pattern itself is correct. And then here's the notes from doing the video, making sure that the video matches the pattern and the pattern guide. And, you know, our conversation recently has been about uh, fraudulent pattern makers. And when they pop out six, eight, ten patterns at a time, or uh, even more ridiculous sneakers, they can't have done all this work. First of all, we are we already know most of them aren't pattern drafters to begin with, but they can't have done all this work. And one of the key things is the inexpensive software that they sell to home sewers. It's sold as if all you do is follow the directions. 36 bus, 27 ways, 48 hip, this tall, this whatever. And it spits out the perfect pattern. No, it doesn't. First of all, there's serious flaws in that software. All the home softwares compared to commercial software. You're talking about a product that costs about under $1,000 sometimes under 500 bucks. The commercial software starts at 10 grand. So you see the disparity, dis discrepancy in what might not be there and what might be there. But even with the 10 or 15 or $20,000 software, a pattern maker must test the pattern after it's printed. There are multiple things that could go wrong. There could be a minor glitch in the software, which isn't likely if you have a good high-end software uh, and it's been well tested, but there could be mistakes in your measurements, could be mistakes in your math or the way you thought it might hang or look. All these things can be surprises or little glitches in the pattern. And so a good pattern maker with experience knows that you can't just spit it out and there you go. You're off to the races. So anyway, um, I kind of diverted from our conversation today. But here's the finished cover of the Artisan T. So there are three versions. The first two are A and B. And that is um, the blue one and the pink one you see on the cover. So the pink one is A, and it has a nice rounded neckline. Really great for wearing jewelry with. Uh, so we kind of, sometimes they call that the jewel neckline so that you can wear um, necklaces and things. The V-neck is view B. And we've got a very unique uh, application for the V-neck. So you probably enjoy that in the video guide. And then the print version is view C. And the difference between C and A and B is merely an extra width of fabric. It's a triangular piece, similar to a godet, but it's a triangle. We are, that's why we just call it a triangle. That is added to the width of the bottom hem of A and B and not in C. Uh, so anyway, but the back pattern is the same for all three. So it's really easy and you can mix and match uh, different aspects. Uh, currently I'm planning on taking the C neckline and applying it to the AB uh, pattern. But you can also play with the different uh, lengths of the pattern. So let's take a look at these just back here. Um, so these dress forms that we use or mannequins are generally uh, close to six foot tall. So you see the proportions on somebody who's between five, eight and six foot tall on here. But you may find that you want those proportions to hit you slightly different depending on your height and your body shape. So you can play with these 
by raising this or lowering it. And that's really simple on the pattern itself. And then just meet up with the other side. So you're just creating a little bit different angle. There are two short and lengthen lines on these patterns. So you can use those. Uh, if you want to maintain the same shape, but you just want to lower it. And there's a short and lengthen line closer to the bottom. So you can decide where you want to add that uh, extra length. And you know, when you have to add a lot of length for you tall gals, you may want to do it in two places. The same as shortening a lot. Now I have that uh, issue. So if I have to shorten six inches, I'm not going to take it off from one place. I'm going to take a little bit from down here and a little bit from up here. Oh, we're, I'm too far away? Uh, the lighting is not good. Okay. So you can really play with this. What I like is the full length in the front, but I liked my back a little bit shorter. So I shortened the back on some of mine two inches, but I left the front exactly as the pattern is. You could do that. You can make the back even longer. Uh, so you can really play with the components of this to make it fit your silhouette and your aesthetic and what pleases you. You could take this to uh, below the knee and make a real full length tunic out of it. And you'll see online, we showed one of the versions. It's the red version I made for myself with a wide leg pant. And it gives a very artsy uh, look to the outfit. So there's lots of options with... Can uh, you spin it so that they can see the side and the back? Oh, sure. So this is view C. And view C... Uh, this is what the side view looks like. And so then let's come around here to the back. And these have not been altered in length. But again, remember, this gal is about six foot tall. So it really covers her derriere, if that's what you're looking for. A lot of us like that uh, little camouflage. All right, move her arm up. Now this is the left side of view C. So it too has a different hem length front and back than on both sides. Okay, so that's view C. Now, let's look at view A. She's going to be a little harder to move because she's not on wheels. So she's like flying. We good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's view C. And view C and A are the ones with this extra triangle piece. So let me raise her arm up a little bit here. And you can see this extra piece that's thrown in here to create a, a fuller swing in the pattern. So that's what gives it more of a circumference and a little bit of a, a juxtaposition, a little bit of a different angle. Now I'm gonna turn around, here's the front. And then here's the left side of A and B and C all will have a similar left side. And then the back, let's turn her around here. You can't cooperate. Okay. Move her forward. So it's a nice full uh, back. Uh, and again, that's A and B, but the back is the same on all three. And we, on the pattern, you're going to have the option for putting the seam up the back. So the back pattern will have two lines on it, one to cut on the fold and one to cut to have a seam down the back. And for those of you who have the mature body, 
that's starting to round back here. You really like that center back seam because you're putting it in all your garments anyway to allow for a change in the shape of that seam so that the hem hangs straight in the back. And we have two tutorials on um, YouTube to tell you how to change that back seam in any garment so that it accommodates a more rounded back. All right, let me turn her back around. You want to tell them about um, how it uh, is similar to the easy or to the five easy tees, mm -hmm. so that it fits very similar. You want me to? Yeah. It fits very similar to the five easy tees. <laughs> it's based on the same block. It's based on the same block. So if you followed along with us on that project, this is going to be a perfect. Um, next shirt for you and i do have a question and janice is asking is this for knits only yes there you go Janice. okay so the answer is yes but janice this is not a, a tight fitting garment so if you wanted if you had a a cupra or a rayon that had a lot of flow or chalet and you wanted to give it a try, I think it might work, but it has to be a soft, uh, loose, but it's not tight fitting anywhere. You know, it's just a nice t-shirt like garment. Um, and again, it's based on the same block as the five easy tees. And we only put the three quarter length sleeve in it, but Brenda and I have both been adding, uh, like the idea of a, a long sleeve. So the red one you'll see online, yeah, I did lengthen the sleeve on that one, and I like that one a lot. Matter of fact, I'll go get that one. So I'm sure she's going to get to the point, hopefully I'm not uh, jumping ahead here, but while she's getting that shirt, that she does have this um, in kits. If you saw the newsletter and went to the website, I'm gonna put the link right now to all the different options. Um, yes, Claudia, it's knit. Um, so you have, you can buy anything from just the pattern to the full kit with the fabric and what you need in it to make um, the tee. I am guessing she wore the shirt. I forgot to bring it back down because it disappeared. But this is just really fun shirt to be able to wear casually. Like she said, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. It's gonna depend on what kind of fabric you pick, what kind of pattern is more um, what I'm thinking. Cause you can see we have the fun pattern in the back with all the different colors and then you have a solid. So like I have a solid on and um this would look really fun with you know some layered jewelry if i want to dress it up or if i just want to run out to the store this would look great too a casual look uh, janice says a wild pattern chalet would be fun yeah it would um and again it's a lot like the five easy t in a way that depending on which fabric you choose it can look like a completely different shirt and people wouldn't even notice like, oh, well, didn't you just wear that yesterday in a different color? Um, the one that Janet is gonna bring down, hopefully. Yeah, I said, I think she wore it and for, <laughs> forgot. Um, it has a texture to it. So that takes it to a different level as well, opposed to just, you know, the solid. And she, like she said, she patterned that with a wide Pant. It gives more of like an artsy look if you were going to go out for the evening. Sorry. I oh, she, she, oh, she full on went and changed. Well, I thought it was on the rack in the other room and yeah. I had taken it upstairs. But anyways, so she, so she did a, so you could see the full. And this one's got the full length sleeve. I didn't quite get my shoes back. That's all right. I don't have you all the way to the bottom anyway. Yeah. Okay. 
So you can see, like we, we said, she's got that, that fun. Um, and put your arm up here because I was explaining to them that it's like a textured. It's a honeycomb. Yes. I couldn't remember, but I did know. It, it looks textured. for all the world like, and they actually even called it a white dot, but that's not really a white dot. If you stretch it out. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's a honeycomb uh, knit. Very comfy. All right. She had a whole wardrobe change. Right now. <laughs> I should have had it here. I could have done it quicker. So what I was saying is uh, it's a lot like the 5 Easy T and the fact that depending on what your what fabric you use or what pattern, it can look like a completely different shirt. It can go from just casual right dressed up mm -hmm. absolutely depending on the neckline and the fabric and then all the different lengths and like i said we're still playing with the different lengths so you can just you can turn this into your own thing and but you know especially if you made the five easy tees you already know what size to cut out there's half the battle right there <laughs> that's always helpful yeah yeah so um Julia says, I got the fabric. Guess I need to buy the pattern now. Mm -hmm. How many different fabrics do they have to choose from? Remind me. Well, each one has between six and nine fabrics. or three kits. Okay, there's an upscale, and I did link it in the comments. There's an upscale kit, a posh kit, and a luxury kit. So the upscale kit has the bamboo knits in it. And... Um, Looks like there's six to choose from. There was. That's a bamboo. This is the luxury. The luxury. Nope, this is the upscale, sorry. Okay, the upscale, there was seven, but we sold out of one already. Don't uh, delay. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, yeah, the upscale is the really Italian designer knits. Yes. Yeah, those are really pretty. The, yep. And then you have the posh kit. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to yep. choose from in there. And that one's got the picture of this garment. Okay. And this fabric plus all the others. This are, fabric. Yeah. The honeycomb fabric is in that kit. And then all the rest of the fabrics in that kit are heather jerseys. Mm -hmm. And those heather jerseys are a rare bird because they're made in the united states i feel it there's you know it. there's just not that much fabric made in the u.s anymore so it's kind of exciting when you find we took a trip one of our trips to new york mm -hmm. and one of the ladies that went with us she was relentless now this was about 10 years ago every store we went into she'd say do you have any fabric made in the u.s and we kept telling her there's no fabric made in the U.S. And every store we went into, they'd tell her, no, no, no. So she would have been real excited to have found this fabric. <laughs> and then you have your luxury kit. And it looks like there's seven, seven. in there. So if you have a hard time <laughs> with decisions, I feel you. Maybe just go with one kit and <laughs> choose from there. <laughs> oh, one's one type, like one scale, like yeah, scale pick, or whatever. Yeah, or Don't try to open them up. <laughs> <laughs> it might make you a little cuckoo. Um, but the kits are always, uh, if you're new to Islander here, we always put the all the items, with the exception of maybe the thread, in the kit. And then we reduce it by the 20% off of our retail value. So you can buy everything you need separately. And if you have, all the components you just need the pattern obviously we've got the pattern here for you Absolutely. so if you have done the kits before and these kits include the um the fusible tape so if you've done the kits before and you have that it's still maybe beneficial to buy the kit because you get the 20 percent off and you just get more tape and more you can make more shirts but that's up to you that's something to for you to think about because every kit comes with the fabric the pattern the super the roll of the super fine straight fusible tape and a roll of the double sided fusible tape, which you don't want to make any of these without. It can be done, but make your life easier. Well, and add longevity to your project by putting the tape in the shoulders, because now I can hang this garment 
not for 12 months or something, but I can hang this for the season and it's not going to stretch out of the shoulders. You know, sometimes they can get stretched yeah. out sitting on the hanger. And the double-sided tape that we put in the hem, oh, I just wouldn't even put a hem in a knit ever again without it. I would just not do it because you know how knits curl and you're trying to put a hem in and keep everything flat and neat. It's just impossible. This tape is negligible in after the the garments wash but before it helps hold it in place it's like a temporary adhesive but it's only three eighths of an inch wide which makes it perfect width for a three eighths inch hem which a lot of t-shirts will have so it works out great for that um oh and the ultimate pattern guide is included with this pattern. Did we talk about that yet? No, the video we pattern guide. So it will be uploaded onto YouTube and it will take you through every single step of B, which would be very similar to A. The neckline on A is almost, well, it's very similar to most any t shirt, including the five easy tees. The and then we will take you through the steps on C that are different from whatever's on A and B. Otherwise, we'll just give you a few of the steps on C at the end of the pattern guide. But at the beginning, we'll give you, well, well the whole pattern guide will give you all of the steps. So anyway, I kind of botched that, but you'll have everything you need for either of you. Uh, and I will be demonstrating it so you'll see exactly what I do and how I do it. And I'll point out some tips and um, uh, remind you of some of the technique on how to hold the fabric so that you get really nice um, construction. Okay, Melanie, I do um, see what you're saying. And I understand I would feel the same way. She says it's a hard time seeing the fabric from the thumbnails. And then you go to the fabric page so unfortunately the website is not something we design so we can't change that but one thing that i like to do um in situations like that is i will open the fabric page in a different tab oh, so you if can... you've ever done that um so then you can easily toggle back and forth instead of losing your place on that kit page and if we could do that for sure i would do that for you and everybody else um mm -hmm. but we don't have complete <laughs> control um, but if, yeah, if you go to the website and pull well, up fabric and knits. Yeah. And I'll point this out. I did take a little time and most of the fabrics for one collection are together. So if you open up the first page of knits, the first six fabrics there are the upscale kit. And I'll link that knits page right and now. And then the next few are the bamboos for the... Uh, What's the other kit? No, that is the upscale kit. Anyway. Gosh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, they they will be, you'll be able to see most of them all on one page. Yep. And I just linked that in the comment. Um, I know. I thought that was frustrating too. And actually I'm working with uh, just a little rehaul of our website. And I will ask um, the gentleman tomorrow if there's anything that they could do to change that. But a lot of these websites are what you call templates. And so we have to live with some of the um, limitations that it has. So, but I, I am gonna look into that because I found that frustrating too. If you're not completely familiar with all those fabrics, you flipping back and forth, trying to pick the one you like. Mm, yeah. So um, Brenda said she missed the new pattern. Um, it's on the mannequins behind us, but here is all three views, three different necklines, as well as a different hem and view C. C, right? Yeah. Yeah, view C is, has a little, is a different front altogether. Um, and we sent this all out in the newsletter. So if you check your inbox, if you have the newsletter, you will be able to see it. And then first page of patterns and the first page of kits 
you you'll be able to pull it up right away or at the bottom of the home page <laughs> <laughs> yeah that too right, it says new product yeah. all right any other questions on the pattern i i'm going to uh, tell you a little secret i'm trying to think of who the first person was but we've had these sort of uh we've been working on this pattern so a few weeks ago i wore it and i usually when i wear something people say oh did you make that or is that one of your patterns right nobody said a word except for one person and so i gifted her that pattern and then last week we had the dress forms in the back uh in the back the mannequins and nobody said a word but pam clark wrote me and said is that a new pattern i really hope that's a new pattern and so pam won a free pattern as well so brenda oh she's up there i can't remember uh my brain is stuck there's two different size ranges so make sure that you look closely to choose the size range for your pattern and or your kit it was carolyn 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 biondo right biondo grassi yes carolyn was the first person uh to ask about the new pattern so she will be receiving it we will be shipping everything next week we are still getting some last oh, yes. things together and we when we initially do something like this we do like to gang uh ship it <laughs> it makes it easier for all of us so we will be shipping next week on any order that includes the um the new pattern the new artisan tea or artisan tea kits all right yeah and anyone that is interested in the honeycomb fabric and purchases it i am going to send you a few of my tips because this fabric doesn't react the same as other knits honeycomb is a whole new world i found out one saturday all day mm -hmm. so let me pass on what i learned so that you can do it faster and easier because that's what we do here at islander we test it we make sure it's right and we give you all the best tips and anything that we've learned along the way yes there was something you told me to make sure that we said but i think it was the shipping yeah okay i think so too and the conversation is really blowing up in a positive way about the fraudulent pattern makers and we've gotten a tremendous amount and i hope you read the newsletter today but um someone found a pattern and she sent it to me uh, asking me you know this woman is creating what she calls blocks which is what we do with our sloper sloper block is the same the same thing essentially and when she got it she noticed that the sleeve cap had over four and a half inches of ease in it it's just no no sleeve cap should have four and a half inches of ease you might have four and a half inches of gathering in the old puff sleeve if you're as old as I am, when you were a little girl, you wore puff sleeves and they were gathered all the way around there. But that's a very round sleeve cap. In this particular uh, block, her sleeve went straight up like uh, Mount St. Helens. And all of that had to be eased in. So all of it would be easing in all along here you cannot ease in four and a half inches you're lucky if you can ease in an inch and a half so it was way wrong and when she wrote the woman the woman told her that she had to do it that um had to do it that way in order to uh, allow enough room in the front for bigger bus cups okay i don't want i think that's part of my shirt coming from there no and I think if you read the newsletter, you'll see that I wrote the word gibberish because it made no sense at all. But here's what happened. And I wanted to do an illustration and I just couldn't because it, anyway, arm side. Here's your front of your arm side. Here's the back of your arm side. Okay, you got this curve. 
Now, really cheap software, when you tell it, oh, I have a D cup, it will take that arm side and shift it like that. Okay, here's your side seam down here. But now your your whole bottom of your armhole is over closer to your uh, breast. <laughs> it just shifts it all forward. And yeah, now there's a lot of fabric here, but you can't wear that. There's no way you can wear that. And Jessica and I know because back in the day, there was a pattern company that said, oh, we can scan you and we can make patterns to fit you perfectly. So we said, okay. Scan Jessica because Jessica was young. She was college age or just out of college at the time. She had a double D, but she was a very small girl, but she had a double D uh, bus. So we said, well, that will be a good test for us. They can fit that. That's exactly what they did. They rotated that arm side. Then we talked to a friend of ours, Rosebud. She had them do her scan four or five times and every time it rotated the arm side forward. That is such a, I don't know if you can imagine, but it's just be totally ill-fitting. It won't work. But the software, that's one of those glitches. It doesn't know what to do with the big bus. So it just shifts everything sideways. So that's what happened with that pattern. And I guess that's all I have to say about that. I don't know if I had more to say, but yeah. So that's what happens with inexpensive software. So watch if you have purchased uh, some of these independent patterns. Take a look at those arm sizes and make sure that they're staying uh, balanced and they haven't been shifted. All right. Anything else today? Crickets? I think people went shopping. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm really excited to see what some of you do because like I said, I'm excited about the fact that you could take this pattern and make it your own and really play with those hems because they don't match on the sides. So it doesn't matter. You can keep playing with it and make it be a stronger difference or a, a lesser difference or go in the opposite way. Um, so just really have fun with that kind of play with it's a way of playing, designing a garment that you know is going to fit because we've already done all the work up here. It's going to fit. So the playing would be lengthening or shortening the sleeves and then playing with the hemline. So um, I would love to see pictures of what people do, whether you make it straight as the pattern calls for or you do some playing around with it. We would love to see those. And unfortunately, and if anybody knows the secret, please let me know, but when Facebook changed to Meta, they changed the platform a lot, and it doesn't allow our uh, friends uh, and followers to post any longer on our page. So we will invite you to send them to us, and we will post them so that others can be inspired by your work and, uh, and, and just see what great stuff you're making. Um, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to reply to someone and it didn't work. Um, I will just say, Sharon, you don't have to worry about that last company that she was talking about with the scanning. Oh, they are out of business. Yeah. Long time now. <laughs> and for that. Don't worry about catching that one. Um. You know, the I don't think anybody's doing scan patterns anyway. I don't I don't know of a company that's doing that. For a reason. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with the scanning. See, the scanning can work. Like with Ditto Forms, they scan your body and it works for the the way they carve out your dress form. Like, well, this one of Brenda's is here. Uh, we've shown you that before, the one with the turquoise uh, sloper on it. And it came out so identical to Brenda. She could fit herself and she can actually see what it's going to look like in the back. Um, but that, so it's not the scanner that goes wrong. It's the operator of the software. So if the software can be good or bad, but if the operator doesn't know pattern drafting, uh, like the back of their hand, then they're not going to know what's wrong 
or that there is anything wrong. Uh, there was one company, and I think they came out with something like 100 patterns the first time they came out. And we said, whoa, that's unbelievable. Let us, why don't we buy a couple of those patterns? So we did. And we took them back to our hotel room, and we had a good laugh because they were also printed on the inexpensive software. And there were cutting lines on that pattern that didn't connect. So there was like empty space. And some of them just went right off the page. So there, it wasn't even a real pattern. But how did that person who printed that pattern out not see that? Because they didn't even look at it. They just pulled it up and put it in an envelope and charged you 20 bucks. So um, that's what happens with bad software. What else? I think that that's all we have. We can let everybody to go shopping. If you have any questions about the kits, the pattern, the fabric separately, um, any of that, uh, easiest way to get your questions answered is email islandersewing at comcast.net. Of course, we don't turn away phone calls. <laughs> But um, but we're not always here. We're not always uh, right at the phone. So um, and we're going to continue the conversation about pattern makers and pattern making. And I know in the article I wrote last week, I said I estimated maybe two percent of the patterns that are for sale in the United States are uh, drafted properly. And someone wrote and said, "Could you please tell me who they are?" <laughs> they are. Honestly, I couldn't you know, like tell you exactly, and maybe there's 7%, maybe there's 1%. I don't know. All I know is that many years ago, there was a group of us that formed an organization called the Independent Pattern Company Alliance. And it was our goal, as we saw, and this was early on when just a few more independents were popping up, and we saw some very poor pattern making and then we heard customers say don't buy independent patterns because they're all bad well no they aren't so we decided to start an organization so a group of us did and we said well we will invite other people to join our organization but they must pass the criteria of having a properly drafted pattern well-written instructions and illustrations we did not pass one person and we didn't do a huge amount, maybe six, but we didn't pass one person. And some of the problems were so egregious, it was appalling. So that's why I feel that way. And then so many other people have brought me patterns saying, well, four inches of ease in a sleeve cap or whatever. I know there's a tremendous amount out there and I don't use patterns. I don't use other people's patterns anymore. It would be very rare. So I don't have personal experience in which ones are are uh, doing it right. So we get a lot of emails about the one. how to help fix the <laughs> Yes. And I want to continue the conversation and I'm happy to answer your questions, but I will maintain my professional ethics and I am not going to talk badly about a pa pattern maker specific by name or even close to who they are. Um I think that you just be careful. Don't buy five or six patterns from somebody the first time. Buy one. Take a look at it. Make sure that, make it up. If it's good, then, you know, keep moving on. But I've written in, a, if you go look back at our last couple of uh, newsletters, I, I did write some ideas about how to vet these people. But the first one didn't work out so well. Because I said, hey, just go to their About Us and read all that. Well... The gal that created the crazy sloper pattern, she claims to have been trained by one of the top experts in London. No, I don't think so. But who's going to call her out? I don't live in London. I don't know that guy. I'm not going to call him up. But her work sure doesn't look like it. So there's a lot of fraud as far as what they say about their background as well. So the only way you're going to know is to take a really critical look at the garments on the people on the website and then a very critical look at the pattern before you cut it out and then test one at a time. 
Sorry, I wish I in could the meantime, be more help. <laughs> buy the artisan tea. Yeah. You'll know that the Islander patterns and anything drafted by Connie Crawford is going to all. This is what really cracks us up. We get emails and people say, I just love your patterns. All the pieces fit together. Well, I Girl, certainly I hope so. But that was the goal. Yeah. Yes. It so. doesn't mean that mistakes aren't made or whatever, but like the due diligence is there. The knowledge is there. And um, the difference like is, she said, she's got copies and copies and copies of notes of fix this, fix that. Okay, we made it. Now fix it again. Now we made it. So, yeah. And we try to catch all of our mistakes before we sell it to you. That's our goal. And, um, but we're not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So get a hold of us if you need anything. Islander Sewing at Comcast.net. And send us um, pictures of your finished garments. Yeah. And like I said, any more questions about patterns or pattern making, or if you want to learn more about pattern making, you know we've got some great information about that as well. So have a great week. Have lots of fun sewing this month, and we'll see you again next month.